What's going on everybody? Christopher Lopez here, strength coach at the Jersey Strength Pit in Jackson, New Jersey. And uh, I want to reach out to you guys today on the Warrior Fitness blog because John Haas is a really good friend of mine. And he wanted me to talk to you guys today about conditioning um, and how, how you know it can be effective in not only boosting your total endurance, but boosting um, how effective your body is at moving when it comes time to doing your strength training. Now that may sound a little confusing, but we're going to go over it in a second. Okay. <clears throat> so when you do, when you train any way in the gym, whenever you incorporate something in your programming or your coach incorporates something in his programming, there's a reason behind it. And it shouldn't just be one dimensional. You shouldn't do conditioning just to boost your wind. Okay. Just to boost your endurance. There's different things that you can do or different types of conditioning that you do to not only boost your endurance, but boost your body's effectiveness when it comes time to do those power movements. So for example, we don't do a lot of running here as far as distance. <clears throat> we don't do, you know, a lot of long stints of conditioning like a lot of coaches do. We tend to keep conditioning very short and sweet. <clears throat> if we do a conditioning session, it's 20 minutes long, 25 minutes. Very rarely is it 30 minutes. We keep it very, very short. And when we mix conditioning in our strength sessions, 20 seconds here, 20 seconds there, no more than 30 seconds at a clip. So that's kind of how we run conditioning here. But I'm going to show you a session that we did today with some of our guys in the morning. If you look up at the board, you see some strength based movements okay explosive movements some of them one-legged burpees on the TRX push-ups mixed push-ups Bulgarian bag rows sit-outs battling rope and crunches we did them for eight rounds 20 seconds on 10 seconds off and there you see the rounds there but that is a way to go all out. I mean, it's interval training, which you guys are probably familiar with, but it's a way to go all out in those intervals and not just be doing sprints, but doing push-ups, doing rows, um, things that are going to help boost, you know, your strength movements. The push-ups are going to help boost your bench press or your floor press because <clears throat> when you do push-ups at high volume like this, eight rounds of push-ups for 20 seconds, you might hit anywhere from 10 to 20 push-ups during those eight rounds. So you're doing at least at least 80 push-ups. Um, you know, and they tend to be pretty quick because you, uh, in sessions like this, in the conditioning sessions, you, it just happens, you tend to bang them out quick. So it makes your body more efficient at doing those movements. So when it comes time for your bench press, your body is accustomed to doing those push-ups and your bench press or your floor press is more efficient and probably a little stronger. So not only do you get the conditioning aspect and the endurance aspect, but you get the strength training as well mixed in a little bit there too. So again, it's not one dimensional. We kind of, we kind of look at conditioning from different perspectives here. Another way I mix it in is during our strength training. You can see up here it's kind of a jumbled mess uh, I'm not gonna really <laughs> go over why it looks like this but uh, if you could see conditioning right we have a group of a pairing of four exercises in different groups right a B and C and in each group you see conditioning you see a couple move a couple movements at the top conditioning and then a core movement. Same thing here, a couple movements at the top, conditioning, a core movement, a couple movements at the top, conditioning, core. So when we put conditioning in with the strength training, keep it very short and sweet, 20 to 30 seconds. It could be really anything you want, battling rope, jump rope, uh, light kettlebell swings, <clears throat> can run a lap around the gym, uh, light kettlebell snatches, slam balls, anything that's going to help boost your performance or boost your strength over time. So again, we frown upon long distance 
Because especially from a combat perspective, which you guys are warrior fitness, so there might be a little bit of that there. Um, you train for your sport. There tends to be rounds in your sport. There tends to be short bursts of high intensity and then bursts of lower intensity. So you're not going to do a ton of road work or a ton of distance running. I mean, you can, but it'd be more beneficial if you did more interval work and worked in this, this different type of conditioning that's going to not only boost your wind, but also boost how your body moves, your strength over time. You know, so again, I can't stress it enough. It has to be more than one dimensional. You have to look at conditioning from from more than a perspective of, well, I have to lose fat or I have to, you know, I just have to get in shape. If you do your conditioning like this, I guarantee you your performance is going to go up without a doubt, without a doubt. And you're going to get leaner, obviously. And, uh, and you'll probably get a little stronger too because it's all about making your body efficient making your nervous system efficient at dealing with higher volume or higher weights. And this is one way to go about it. Okay. So hopefully this makes sense that again, that's the two ways we run conditioning here. We run specific conditioning sessions in, uh, in rounds with intervals, short bursts of high intensity strength exercises, usually body weight, and then, uh, short bursts of break time. And then we also mix it in with our strength training as well. And real quick, the reason why we put, if you looked up here, you probably saw that we put conditioning and then a core movement, right? So we have conditioning and then a core movement, conditioning, core movement. The reason why I do that is because when you do your conditioning, your heart rate tends to get a little higher, right? Obviously. If you put a core movement there, there afterwards, it works as an act of recovery you're still working, you're still banging your, up your core, but it, usually core movements don't require a ton of movement. Um, and they're not very stressful on the body as a whole. So it allows you a little bit of recovery time while you're still training. That's why we put the conditioning before the core movements. If you went core conditioning, then you're conditioning, and then you're going right back into a power movement or some sort of strength movement and uh, there's no recovery time in between so it gives you a little bit of a, a, a buffer uh, in between sets so that's how we run it here and I, again I guarantee that if you start doing conditioning in some way it doesn't have to be exactly like this I'm sure John does something similar but it's more about why you do it the way you do it it's more about thinking a little bit deeper than just the endurance aspect and kind of hitting on how it can be more beneficial from a combat sport perspective or from a strength training perspective. You know, you just have to look at it and say, okay, if I do it this way, it's going to hit three or four of my goals as opposed to just leaning out or just losing, uh, you know, losing body fat and gaining endurance. All right, guys, again, I'm Christopher Lopez. If you want, you can check out my blog. That was weird. I think there's a ghost in here. <laughs> Did you hear that? <laughs> you can check out my blog at cjlopez.com or uh, you can check out the gym website at jerseystrength.com. All right. Again, I appreciate reaching out to you guys. Thanks, John. You're the man. Peace out.